Hello everyone, and welcome to another Adventures in Cubeland stream. Yeah, as promised, today we're gonna look at customize uh, the Kubernetes Native Configuration Management tool. If you're new to these, uh, or and you're following these on YouTube, uh, please subscribe uh, and like. Uh, this is part of a series of stream called Adventures in Kubeland, where uh, I explore Kubernetes and the CNCF uh, tooling. And today, as I said, we're going to look at Customize. The last episode, we looked at Helm. Um, and since they're often uh, compared, uh, Helm and Customize, I decided that this time around, it was time to look at Customize. So without further ado, let's start diving into it. Uh, so, if you look at the website, first of all, custom, you can find the customized website at customize.io uh, and in the website, it actually, they're actually sharing the definition that I used, right? Uh, Kubernetes and Native Configuration Management. Now, if you're in completely new to Customize, you may want to know that Customize was actually born as a standalone tool uh, that was, uh, you can still use it as a, as a standalone tool. Uh, there was uh, a template free way to customize application configuration. Now in the last stream, while we're watching a Helm, we saw that Helm has instead the approach of using templates. With templates, you can actually define your uh, template definition. And by the way, I want to show you something uh, in a moment. And then you define your values. There is a step when those templates and the values are interpolated, and then you get out the result. Now, last time we were looking at Helm, helm.sh. And if if you were there, uh, you remember that, or if you watched that on, on YouTube, you, I told you that in the chart registry, in the artifact, well, I'm searching for, I mean, any artifact in general, but Nginx, right, let's suppose. I was expecting to find the template button in here, but we couldn't find that last time. Look at here, right? So not right now, the button is actually there. So as I say, the Helm, you have the concept of templates. You can load the templates and it's gonna show you those are the templates. You had the concept of interpolating values and then you have the values, right? For instance, those are the default values. So those things get interpolated before uh, the app was generated. Customize. It goes in the other direction. It's a template free. Uh, so I told you that you can actually use it by itself or why they say native configuration management. The reason for the native configuration management is that you can actually use it with kubectl. So I don't remember, I don't remember exactly why, maybe a couple of years ago, uh, kubectl was uh, integrated into, sorry, customize was integrated into kubectl and it became a single uh, way to to change to uh, customize your application directly with kubectl so even if you go into the uh, let's say core doc right uh, if i go to installation you have the kubectl or the customize right you can go directly to install customize or you can use it in kubectl if you go to customize, you can actually go binary, for instance, and just install customize. So that's what I've done, right? I have customize installed. It doesn't mean that we cannot look at the kubectl one. I'm more than happy to use it in kubectl, but I want to show you what customize does by itself. And then if we want to move uh, further, we can look at uh, kubectl. Now let's look at the guides. Let's start from the guides, right? There is a small introduction. Again, we're not going to look at customize. We're not going to look at kubectl and TLDR. Customize helps customizing config files in a template-free way. Customize provide a number of handy methods like generators to make customization easier. And customize uses patches to introduce environment-specific changes uh, on an already existing standard config file without disturbing it. Now, to be honest, the first time that I read this, it didn't really resonate with me. I was fairly used to uh, templates, but um, customize introduced a new uh, format that took me a bit to familiarize with. The fact that uh, there is a solution for customizing Kubernetes resources configuration free from templates and DSL 
uh, lets you customize raw template for YAML file for multiple purposes, leaving the original YAML untouched and usable as is. It's a nice premise, right? It's a nice thing, but again, how do you do that exactly? Uh, so customize target Kubernetes. So it understands and can patch Kubernetes style API objects. It's like make in, in that what it does is declared in a file and it's like said in that it emits edited text. Interesting, okay, so let's let's see what, how we do it, right? Make a customization file. In some directory containing your YAML resources file, deployment services configuration, create a customization file. Now let's go into, I created already a folder in here called customize, right? And they're telling me to create a customization file. I would assume that customization file is actually just something like this, right? Uh, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that I never used it, okay? And then we want some deployment something. So I believe that in here I should have one example from the last time where in uh, okay, interesting. Helm is empty. Where did it? We test it last time. I don't remember anymore. Uh, okay. Let's see what's in Helm. Okay, never mind. Let's let's create a new one. Uh, I hoped that we had already uh, some resources, but it's not a big deal, right? We can always get a new resource, a new uh, resource from somewhere. Point is that uh, you have this this file can declare those resources and any customization to apply to them. Plus structure sum up customization the YAML. So first of all, it's not customization, but it's a customization the YAML. So customization move to dot yaml right uh do you know what that does by the way do you know what the syntax i just used does the curly brackets dot comma uh, comma dot something right so that's expanded by uh, the terminal itself so if i do this and i press tab um actually this doesn't complete it there but if i do echo right it's probably gonna be uh better see what it does so that's expanded into uh, the combination of those two values plus customization. So if I was putting here back, you would see that it's dot back dot yaml, but we're digressing. So let's move on. So it's assumed that you have a customization dot yaml, and there's a since this directory could be a fork of someone else's configuration. If if so, you can easily rebase from your source material to capture improvements because you don't modify the resource directly. Okay. I mean, details, it's fine. Generate customization YAML with customized build. Okay, fantastic. So you can run it as customized build and something like that. The YAML can be directly applied to, yeah, that's fine, right? So probably this is gonna output the result uh, in standard output, and then you can get that from this one, that the dash is for standard input, and that's the way you, you do it. So shall we test this out? Let's test this out. Um, so let's let's create a resource in here that is I don't know. Actually, they should have examples, right? Why should I, should we do it ourselves? Uh, create variants and overlay too much, right? Let, let me give me an example. Resources deployment stateful set. Uh, okay, what is this? Resources plus controllers overview. Kubernetes resource and controllers overview. Um, this section provides background on the Kubernetes resource model. This information is also available in Kubernetes.io. Well, we don't really want to go down there, right? We don't care about how this looks like. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this example in any case in any case, right? So I'm gonna create a theme deployment. Okay. I cannot type today. I don't know why. There. Okay, and now if I do this, we have a deployment the YAML and a customization the YAML. But we don't really care about this, right? We I mean, probably we know already what spec and status is about. So let's let's move on. Um configuration management. Okay, introduction. Uh managing your deployment application config using kubectl. That's is that why do we why is it sharing this with us? Server interesting resource. Why is it doing all of this? App deployment, extending, extending, customized. No, that's not what examples. multi in line patch. Okay, this is confusing. Even the guide per se. Maybe I missed something, but I don't see anything that 
gives me an idea on how to use customize. Even the introduction, right? It's very basic. It doesn't tell me what's inside customize. It doesn't tell me anything. Okay, so where shall we go? multi -pies. resources. Uh, customize encourages definition encourages defining multiple variants, dev staging pro and prod as overlays on a common base. It's possible to create an additional overlay to but again, it assumes you need you know what an overlay is, and it's probably overlays was introduced in here, right? We probably went through it real fast. Yeah, see so creating variants and overlays. So manage tradition uh, variants of a configuration like deployment, uh, development, staging, and production using overlays that modify a common base. The first structure is these. You can have base, overlays, right? It seems like there is a folder for each one of them. And take the, f the work from step one above, move it into some app directory called base, then place overlays in a sibling directory. Yeah, that's what we see here, right? And overlay is just another customization referring to the base referring to patches to apply to the base. This arrangement make it easier to manage your configuration with Git. That the base could have fell from an upstream repository managed by someone else. The overlays could be in a repository you own, arranging the repos clones and sibling on this, covering the need to get some modules. Okay, I can see that. It's a bit confusing. Generate YAML file with build some up overlays production. Yeah, but it still doesn't tell you that's interesting. It still doesn't tell you the context of the content of customization of the YAML, right? So how, how do I know why this works, right? I'm assuming this works, but is it magical? What does it do? Right? So that's what I want to understand. Why does it work? Okay. Never mind. Let's let's move on. Let's see what's gonna happen in here, right? Uh, so if we go from here, what we're saying is that it doesn't tell us what customized or YAML, customization the YAML contains. So how can we know what's in there, right? So if we go on and we look at the references, let's see if something helps us in here, right? Uh, customized building, uh, list of, uh, a list of customized building generator and transforming again not really interesting it's it's too deep i want something way higher level right i want an example can we find an example in here uh customize get started and we get back to this right introduction configuration management resource printing uh configuration management apply changes that's that's all things that we know uh, secrets and config map. Uh, can be generated using the secret generator. Okay. All right, still, I guess the customization of YAML can do secret generator or config map generator. The generator resource name will have suffixes that changes when their data changes. So you're allowed for more of these. This is advanced used, isn't it? So it's like in customization of YAML, you can actually say, look, uh, API version is customized, kind customization, uh, config map generator, the name of the config map, and the application. So what what is telling you? Okay, this this can be interesting. Maybe I don't know how useful it is, but it can be interesting. So what is telling you is that you can actually define the uh, application properties or the configurations as a simple uh, application dot uh, properties. file right and in here you can do something full equal bar and then in customization the yaml you can actually take all of these right copy let's put it in here and here if i do customize build was it build yeah, i think it was a build that's what we get right so you can see that uh, we had an application the properties file that only contain keyword equal value or key you call value and then this gets translated into uh, a kind config map with a specific name and a prefix 
that in theory it will change when we change the content of application the properties so let's try to build it again you can see that the name is the is the same but if i do beam sorry beam application the properties and it's the bar you know, at the i do full equal full and if i run it again and there you go the prefix is changed right and that's what they promised right that's what they said they say that uh, it generates resource name will have a suffixes that change when their data changes so it makes sense um and this is exactly what it's telling us right it was going to generate these and you can see that the the uh, that's exactly what it generated okay the interesting part is that i don't know why but i was expecting this to the suffix to be some sort of a hash function of the file itself and we're getting something different in here uh but hey who knows right who knows what they're doing properties some some of you know please share with me right properties okay whatever secret generator i'm expecting that to, to work similarly right where you can actually create the same thing do the same thing but for secrets instead of uh uh okay interesting see instead of config maps so you still do customize blah 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 but then instead of using the uh theme customize so using the uh config map generator you actually do secret generator and then you give it the name files and the type that's interesting so and yeah that's that's the the content of the file right and it's going to build an output that looks like this. But nothing crazy again. The only thing that it does is probably take this content and add this suffix. That's the useful thing, maybe. Uh, the, the secrets are base64 encoded, fine. But then where do I, I mean, where do I store these, those, right? I need another step probably. I don't want to store this one in, in Git. So that's that's something interesting, right? How would you manage that part with customize? Okay, that's that's already better, right? We're looking at the customization file. Uh, we see that the customization content is still a YAML. It looks similar to uh, the, the resources that we know as, as such there is an API version, there is a kind, and then there's th all the stuff in there, right? And uh, let's see some other example if that helps us in any ways. So container images, dealing with application containers, um, motivation, it may be useful to define the tags or digest of container images, which are used across many workloads. Uh, container images tags are digest, are used to refer to a specific version of an instance of a container. I think we know this, right? So if engineer container, image you may use the tag blah 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 updating the image name or tag for multiple workloads at once increase visibility of the versions of containers images being used within the project set the image tag from external sources okay this is interesting such an environment variable copy or fork an existing project and change the image tag for a container okay i can see that change the registry used for an image Okay, uh, for instance, consider the following YAML file. Okay, let's see what it does, right? So we have a YAML of, uh, a deployment here. So I'm going to change this one. Is it the same? No, it's not, right? So I'm going to delete everything in here. So let me let me do that. And I'm going to paste the, the stuff that is in there. If I do these, okay. So this, as you can see, is a deployment. And it has multiple containers in them, right? It has one, two, three, four containers. Uh, the image tag under container specify the image that has to be pulled from the container registry. Some of thing, some of some of things that can be done with images. Setting a name, setting a tag, setting a digest, setting a tag from a latest comment shas, setting a tag from environment variables, and again. It doesn't give us an example. Check our reference for commands and example for images. Interesting. So nothing in here. But if I go to this one and images. So apparently I need to go to the reference if I want to get some examples. 
get these and then we have the customization so again let's let's save this one let's get into the customization the yaml how do we how are we doing with time we still have 30 minutes so customization the yaml in this specific case you can actually say so you, you can see how resources down there defines the this one here right resources here let me increase this the font size in here our resources in here is pointing to deployment.yaml so that's what tells customize which file it has to change now assume that you can it's called resources is a, a list right so i would assume that you can define we can define more than one but in this case if we look at this again api version customize blah 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 uh, kind customization and then it goes straight to images so on name you can define a new tag a new name right so let's look at the this together so it's telling you take the images named postgres so i suppose it's pointing to these and the new name is my registry my postgres and the new tag is v1 then take the image name nginx and then okay interesting and then change the new so it's it's a they say it's not a domain specific language but it sort of is right uh, so you have to know exactly what to write down in there uh, and you can see here right setting a name the name of an image may be set by specifying new name and the name of the old container image so name of the old container image new name setting a tag is again new tag and the name of the container image so this is the current container image let's say my demo app right and the new tag setting a digest you just define digest so you point to the name and you said digest are we setting a digest up here anytime anywhere uh yes for alpine so here right so it's telling us that if i do a customization build dot what i would expect is that the new digest for alpine is this one well before it was so let's let's look at both of them there right so alpine had had it's interesting so he's actually, he's actually also moving things around see so name was here but then you get image first and then name um it's reordering don't know why but it's reordering things uh probably that's that when it's reading so what i'm expecting is that customize what it does is loads those things in memory uh with a go library and then it applies the changes and then i mean print them out right so i'll put them out again uh does it change anything else deployment spec template containers does it change the the order of the containers nginx nginx postgres postgres my app my app no it's probably not going to do that because those in memory are still a collection so collection order will be kept but those are objects right so now it's probably printing them out in a different order um yeah is it alphabetical order is random order i don't know how go uh, serializes objects but okay good to know and what else you can do you can set the tag you can set the digest setting a tag from the latest commit sha okay so i can see that right so what they're telling you is that assume that you have uh the ci pattern is to tag containers image with a git commit sha uh, of the source code and that's something that we do right you you have a repo uh, you want to release the uh the mm, container from there but you want to have a reference back to the source code that built the container so what you're going to do you're going to look at the code commit that is this one and the container image will be the name of the image and the tag is going to be the commit itself make sense fantastic so what we're seeing is that uh, once you've done that now you want to use the latest commit tag to uh, update your manifest and so what they're doing is as a simple way to push an image that was just built without manually updating the image tag is to download the customize customize standalone tool yeah and run customize edit set image command to update the tag for you and set the latest git commit sha image okay so this is assuming that you are in a 
git repo, right? So git, let's so that this is git repo. This thingy, found this, I don't my git uh, dot uh, first commit so what this is doing oh my god i don't have anything configured in here git config uh dash dash global user dot email I, we don't really care what this is right so it's going to be streaming at streaming at lanziani com and then this would be streamer copy streamer maybe for the next time i'm gonna have this configured already um so this one i would assume that it's gonna return the sha right of the list commit uh oh sorry obviously i forgot to commit back we did the configuration but we didn't commit so again we do this and you go you get the sha and then obviously it, this is editing the uh the image on the fly it's interesting that the full set this cabinet for okay so ls yeah but is that the name of the image so if i do customize edit set image and then nginx app comma sorry colon uh it did it do it in place oh um, oh so so, so no nah, it's fine I'm not saying that it's wrong, right? But what did they do? What? I we it definitely changed the Nginx. What did he do? I don't get it. Do you get it? So it definitely moved things around. Did he change the, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, my bad. No, but why did he do that? Oh, look at that. So it changed the customize. ah, I see. So yes, of course, right? So what he has done, he has changed the customization file to then add this new tag in here. And then what is telling me that I still have to do kubectl, uh, sorry, I don't want to do kubectl apply, I want to do customization build dot, right? And then it's going to apply the nginx, but it didn't work, did it? Name nginx app, name. So let me look at what's in customization. Oh, my bad deployment. But it is, oh, it's the name of the image. See, this is this is what got me. So we're using the name of the container. We should use the name of the image, not the container. So git, and this is why it's nice to have things on git, right? Git checkout dash dash dot. So we got rid of the, I really need to set up my uh, shortcuts in here. And now we can do it again with the just nginx. But it's weird that it's doing these in the customization app. For some reason, I was expecting this to be done on the fly. Uh, so, but if I do this, now I know what is pet, right? So git diff. And this is, of course, it's changing things in here, right? But mostly it's doing this, name nginx. And because those stuff is just moved around, right? So Alpine was right here. It's just being moved on the top. Again, this is something I don't particularly like. This is again, because they're loading things in memory and then dropping them again. Um, but that's the point, right? You get the uh, nginx from one eight zero to the tag that we just have in our command line. Then you do customize apply or customize sorry customize build uh, dot, and you get the the desired output where nginx now is pointing to the latest commit. Still weird to me, right? So because we are actually adding stuff in place, this could have been done possibly on the fly, I would assume. Uh, 
maybe piping things in. Maybe there is a way to pipe things in, right? Setting a tag from an environment variable, that's also interesting. Is it possible to set a tag from, obviously, sorry, obviously, this is how you do it with the embedded solution, right? If you have the embedded solution, you have kubectl apply dash f, and that's how you get the uh, result there. Setting a tag from an environment variable, uh, Okay, same things, right? Again, they're not doing anything special. What's happening here is that you do the same command, except this is an environment variable now, and that environment variable is interpolated for you by the uh, terminal. By the so it's it's not something that you do, right? It's the shell itself that does the interpolation in here, and it's gonna really obviously override the same thing. So in here, if I do whatever, right? Uh, even shell. So that's that's interesting, right? If I do this, uh, okay. Whoa, interesting. What happened there? Uh, so we got some problem. Oh, you look, 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 look. So it's actually doing something more, right? It's actually doing validation in here. Invalid format of an image, use one of the following options. Image equal new image, blah, blah, blah. In this case, what we were doing, we we're doing, what's in shell, right? Echo dollar. Okay, it's been bash. Okay, so that's not a valid one, right? Uh, but if I set something, and if I set on oh no, uh, image or this is tag equal one two three, and then I do the same thing here, right? With dollar tag, nothing magical again, uh, and git div. Now we should see that nginx right has. Where is it? New tag. Was it removed? Wait, when does it do the interpolation? Because this should work. That's interesting. What? Wait. What am I doing wrong? That's an interesting one. It's a new one to me. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong here, but for the love of God, I don't know what. Yeah, but why it doesn't work in line? Am I using the wrong? Okay. Tell me what, it, what did I change? Because I didn't change anything, did I? Oh, sorry. That's me being silly. Yeah, it doesn't work. That is an interesting one. I'm gonna figure that out. Was it using a different? I'm not going to insist on this because I'm pretty sure that I'm doing something silly and someone is going to point that out in either YouTube or in this stream right away. But I was expecting that to work in any case. Let's go back to the example that we're using. This one here. I'm going to do an export. And now get status. If I'm expecting the engine next to be new tag one two three, okay, that's what it works. How it works, fantastic. I think we lost even too much time on this image. Let's keep going. So for now, we've seen what you can do, right? So following on these, you can probably change more things, right? You can probably change the labels. You can change the name prefixes, uh, and you can add patches. But that's, that's the gist of it, right? So you can run transformation on your resources. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. It's actually pretty nice, depending on what you want to do. Um, and here's an example how you can change all the things, right? In this, Or if you can set labels on all your resources, here's the way you do it, right? You have a service, you have deploy, you have labels. And it's interesting what's the pair thing. But it's the same problem for name prefix, prepends the value of the names of our resource and references. As a name prefix is self-explanatory, it helps adding prefixes, prefix to names in the defined YAML files. Okay. So if you have custom, okay, yeah, so it makes sense, right? Uh, let's suppose that you have a bunch of files and this is called D deployment. 
you want to have the custom prefix in here and that's the way you do it this can be useful maybe for i don't know creating different number of resources with different prefixes uh, i can see when you can use the transformations similar for namespace i would assume what does it do We'll override the existing namespace if it's set on our resource or run it if it's not set on our resource. Okay, similar, similar, right? You can add transformation and change all the namespaces. Again, without templates, right? Because you can achieve the same thing with templates. Why is it why is this better? Oh no, maybe this is this is testable. I mean you, you're still gonna have your resources that are gonna work even without the customization, while the templates are not going to be the same. So in this case, you can have a fully working resources and then run the transformation on top of it. But then you still have to trust to, 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 to test the transformations. I suppose customize may have something like a validate command, all right? Uh, build, CFG, completion, create, edit, help version. Mm. Not straight on here, but oh, that's interesting. Does he have something like a validate? I assume that he has some sort of validation, given that when we tried to apply the wrong image, he told us right away that was not the wrong, the right way to do it. Let's see what else he supports. So we have another fifteen minutes, and let's use this time. Effectively. So one thing they've seen multiple times doing is using patches. So again, in here, you can see that for some of those, you can generate brand new things. We have seen the config map generator. It's an interesting one. You can actually change or, or with the new name and new tag, some of the parameters, but with patches, you can do probably more than that, right? So patches also called overlays add or overwrite fields on resources. They are provided using the patches customization field. The patches fields contain a list of patches to be applied in order, in the order they are specified. Each patch may be either a strategic merge path or a JSON 6902 patch. Uh, so 6902 patch refers to a Kubernetes resource and JSON path specific, uh, specifying how to change the resources, blah, blah, blah. Again, we're not gonna go deep. We're going to do another session going deep. Uh, be either a file or an inline string. So the patch can be either a file or an inline string. Uh, a target, a single resource or multiple resources. The patch target selects resources by group, version, kind, name, namespace, label selector, and annotation selector. Any resource which matches all the specified fields has the patch applied to it? Regular expressions. Wow, regular expressions. Who doesn't love a little bit of regular expressions? So the format is the same, API version, kind customization, but this time we're using the patches. And in this case, there is a patch. that's called patch.yaml. The target is group, apps, version one, kind, deployment. We say that any results we matches all the specified fields so this has to be a deployment. It has to start with deploy followed by whatever. It has to have a label selector. Okay. M equal dev and annotation selector zone equal west. And then a group apps and so on. And the patch. is this. It's containing this file, isn't it? That's what we're saying. Or the patch can be inline, where you say replace this path with a new value, I would assume, and target kind. Yeah, still not clear how, okay. Shouldn't we have resources then? Where are the files that we're targeting? possible to override the kind of name or resources if you're adding with the option allow name changes or allow can change for example can deploy an option yeah still doesn't give us the full picture right okay let's look at an example example consider the following deployment of yaml yeah deployment of yaml love this 
we have seen that we already have a deployment of the YAML, so we're gonna take that and change it. So we wanna take this one here, let me do it. We're gonna take this out, this one out and paste this one in, like this. And then the intent is to make the container name, the container image point to a specific version and not to the latest container in the registry. Adding a standard label containing the deployment version. There are multiple possible strategies that all achieve the same results. Patching, patch using inline strategy merge. Again, see, resources is there, right? That's what it was missing. It was giving us an idea on how the, the patches worked, but you still need the resources. Otherwise, how would you know where to, I mean, what to change? In this specific case, it's telling us resources. Well, this is not gonna work, is it? We're missing the kind, customize and everything, right? But now I'm curious. I would assume that that's, I would assume that you still have to leave those, right? But they're telling me not. So I'm gonna actually paste these. I'm gonna comment those two out and see what's gonna happen. we we'll do customization build. We're gonna look at the content in a moment. It still does work, apparently, does it? It's okay, interesting. So some of the fields are uh, optional. They are not mandatory. So in customize, you don't have to specify, apparently you don't have to specify the API version and uh, the kind that is customization, right? So in this case, what we're saying is that patch API version app v1 kind deployment metadata uh, name label. How does it work? Uh, patch API version what was the API version before? V01. Metadata. So it's actually trying to make the container image point to a specific version. Labels. Is it making the... Container image engine X, container image stable. Okay, so instead of Okay, that's okay. API version kind metadata name not used. Not used. Metadata name not used. Spec. All right, this adds the label. Yeah, this adds the label. The label is not there, and then the label is there. But the patch being in line, is he actually, there is no operation, but it, it looks like he's doing something different. It's like matching those things, I would assume, where it has to have a dummy up metadata, right? Yes, so that's the matching thing, and then the labels is what he adds. Or is he specifying all the stuff that he has to change? Is this just a nothing patch? What does it do? So it said strategy. Oh, be the strategy merge. Okay, we are in the strategy merge. Strategic, sorry, strategic merge, right? So in the strategy merge is going to merge the two things. That's what it's doing. And so that's when you, okay, interesting. So that's what he's doing, he's doing the strategic merge. Why do we need the metadata not set in here though? Do we need the metadata not set? Name, metadata name not set. Uh, name not set, and then it goes in spec. What does it do with the not set? Not set. Not used, sorry. What that happened to my English today? Uh, not used, there is no explanation for the not used, but I'm sure we can find something online. Mm. Customization, customized, not used. Mm. 
interesting. Still nothing from here, right? Uh, not used. Okay, I already told you, I don't like this, right? I like that. It's not immediate to find answers with these, apparently. Can Google help us here? Not used. Statement does not remove items on, uh, items on an array. Hash not apply when used on customized directory, apparently accepted. No, it doesn't help us at all. Fix merge. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's explaining that to us, but it's not really helping us, right? So this is patching, and it was either, either your right? it was clear strategic merge, but it's not telling us why not used. It's okay to have, right? Can deployment, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If someone knows, please uh, comment. Uh, leave a comment either in here, here on, on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. I would be very curious. Or reach me out on Twitch, on LinkedIn, Twitch, wherever, right? I'm curious to know where this comes from. I'm probably going to look it up myself, but if you are faster than me, please let me know. Um, and then here we have the using the JSON 6902. This is probably the last thing we're going to look at today, right? In this case, to me, this looks more immediate. So what we're doing in this case is instead of going with this strategic merge thing so in the patch and that's something i used in the past uh i i probably used this strategy merge as well but it looked weird to me so op is the operation that you want to do and right and then you say the path that you want to change in this case is metadata labels and the label that you want to set right so you can actually do this uh sorry wrong one uh, here you go oh it's fine path and then you want to do the value what why was it what was that wait let me try again now i just realized that i had something completely wrong in my uh okay uh and then value uh, 121 oh i'm sure you can mix them and merge the two right and then there is the uh, the other op that we have in here is the replace one so what one thing that got me last time i done that right it was that the patch even if this seems to be a yaml thing it doesn't want yaml it wants inline it wants text so that got me last time I tried this, right? I, I forgot about the pipe dash uh, thing. And so I was like, why does it work? And I'm going to show you what I mean. Uh, path, again, it's this one. Copy. Uh, you can see the, okay, that's that's what I was doing. Sorry. Okay, now I know why it wasn't work. Uh, so you can see the, the zero there. That is the first element of the uh, list of containers. Uh, Value nginx one twenty one zero. Now, if I do customize build again, uh, I've done something wrong. Must specify a target or a patch up and what did I do? Patch value target. Okay. I don't want to go long, so let's see what I've done wrong. Pat ops up. Seems to me that is correct. Why well, was complaining? Target four. Target four. Oh, sorry, my bad. See, I completely missed the target part. Uh, so the, in the one below, we do have the target. On this one, we don't have the target. So I need to add the target in here. Uh, keep doing the same mistake. There you go. And there you go. That's what you have, right? But if by mistake, you remove this one. So this YAML is still valid. Actually, it's, it's, it's valid. But if you do this, that's what you get, right? You get 
something weird where you say it's a, it's a JSON Canada Martial Array into Ghost Trap Field Patch Pad. And it was very confusing to me. I was like, what is it saying, right? It doesn't even tell you where the error is. And okay, now you know, right? If that happens to you, don't forget that patch for them here is actually, it has to be an inline thing. So you want to do the uh, pipe dash and then you're back working. Okay, sorry, took me longer than expected. As I said, uh, I tweeted about it and I also left a message in, Twitter, in uh, LinkedIn. Those streams are going to take longer than expected. So uh, probably we're going to go deeper in the future. We're going to go deep in each one of the tools or we're going to do multiple sessions on each one of the tool. There wasn't much more to cover, to be honest, in here. But again, we went very fast and we went very high level. Thanks for watching. Um, I will wrap this now here. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube and you were patient enough to get to the end, don't forget to like, like and subscribe and possibly share this. And I'll see you in the next stream. Bye.